Hi, good morning, everybody. It's Patricia Coglin, and I wanted to talk to you today about parallels between the practice of ISTDP, in other words, you know, how you're working with patients, and your own journey in learning. So the parallels between training and treatment. In my last video, I was talking about the concept of will, understanding the role of will in psychotherapy and how to work with conflicts around the patient's will, their conscious versus unconscious uh, motivation. And that highlights something that I see happening often um, in the community and in folks who are learning ISTDP, which is a tendency to polarize and have kind of all or nothing thinking. So that can show up around the will, right? Where people get too concrete and focused on either you have will to be here and do the work or not, right? And it's rarely so simple. It's nuanced, it's layered. And we are there really to, again, identify and intensify the patient's conflicts around will, for example. The other two issues I really want to talk today about is anxiety and self-criticism. So what I'm tending to see and hear a lot in my trainees is, again, these very extreme ideas like anxiety is a bad thing. We have to get rid of anxiety. And self-criticism is always bad, pathological, hurtful. So let's look at that. In fact, anxiety can be very useful. So let's think about this, right? We know from over 100 years ago, Yerkes Dotson found that moderate levels of anxiety were associated with peak performance. So if you're not anxious when you're going into a trial therapy and videotaping and showing your tape uh, to colleagues or in a supervision group, then I'm going to suggest you're not up to much, right? If you actually care about what you're doing, you care about effectiveness, you care about your own development, then you're up to something and you're invested and you're going to be a little bit anxious. And anxiety, again, is not a bad thing. We need some anxiety and we need to tolerate anxiety for growth. Otherwise, you're never going to leave your house, right? So it's how you're dealing with that anxiety. And if you can approach right, what you're afraid of. Do it anyway. Do it in order to get the growth. So your desire for, for growth, for learning, for increasing effectiveness has to be greater, right, than your anxiety about making a mistake, right? We all make mistakes. So again, remember, and it's the same with patients, right? We expect pa patients to be a bit anxious. And as long as it's in a moderate tolerable level and the person can tolerate that anxiety for growth to approach what they've been avoiding um that's a good thing your only anxiety only goes down after the fact right after you present or after the person faces right the feeling that they've been avoiding so don't make the mistake of thinking anxiety is a problem right is something to be gotten rid of right i mean that's uh really a, a misunderstanding. You want to keep it in that moderate range. If it's too low, nothing's going to happen. Of course, if it's too high, then you, like in supervision, if you're so anxious, you can't think straight, you're not going to be able to learn. The same with a patient. If they're too anxious, they're not going to be able to process what's happening. So you want to keep anxiety for yourself and patients in that moderate zone. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about is this issue of what's called self-attack. Um, again, I think people are overdoing this. They're seeing all negative or critical comments about the self as a defensive self-attack 
which should be gotten rid of. Now, if you look again at the healthiest people, the top performers, they have the ability to look at themselves and their performance realistically. They can acknowledge what goes well, and they can also detect when they're off and really be able to say, you know, I was off today. Um, this intervention was not successful. I really wasn't listening. Uh, this is not self-attack. They're not attacking the self. They're looking at specific behaviors, for example, um, or a particular outcome, like I got a really bad result with this patient and I realized that I was too um, pushy and I created a misalliance. That's important to be able to acknowledge so that, again, you can learn from it. To say, I'm a stupid idiot, I'm never going to learn this, that's self-attack, and there's nothing to be gained. It's the same with patients. I see so often a patient making a really constructive self-evaluation to say, you know, I just, I'm treating myself so poorly, I've gained an enormous amount of weight, I mean, this is really terrible. And literally, the therapist will say, you know, don't be mean to yourself, you shouldn't say that. And again, this makes no sense. The person is looking at destructive behavior, right? They're not saying I'm a disgusting fat pig, right? They're saying I'm not taking care of myself, I'm eating poorly, I've gained a lot of weight, I look terrible. I mean, this is just what's so. And so to be able to look at yourself in that, you know, unsparing way is necessary. And in fact, this often indicates that the person is actually turning on destructive defenses. So if you misunderstand that and you're seeing this constructive move, right, of looking at defenses that hurt them and wanting to be rid of them, um, you're going to undermine growth. And so it's the same with um, trainees where um, they will regard any criticism of themselves as a self-attack and as something to be gotten rid of. Now, again, when you look at the top performers, this is really interesting. When researchers ask therapists where they think they fall, on a continuum of, so effectiveness of all therapists, are you in the top quartile, the second, third, or the bottom? Well, what do you think? The people who are in the bottom tend to rate themselves as being in the top. They do not have an accurate self-assessment. They grossly overestimate their effectiveness and their level of skill while as the people who actually their outcomes are in the top quartile tend to see themselves as being in the middle, right? They think, you know, I'm pretty good, but they don't think they're great. Um, they're aware of their shortcomings and working on those. So this is really, really important. It's not healthy just to focus on what's working and you know, where you're being effective, of course, it's important to acknowledge and celebrate that, but also to be able to look at your weaknesses and where you need to actually uh, grow. And so I hope this is helpful to you. Really be wary of these kinds of extreme polarities around will, anxiety, self Criticism, right? Seeing all of that as bad. Um, things, again, are more complex and nuanced, and you want to be able to see accurately what's going well, what your strengths are, and also where your weaknesses are and what you need to address. So I hope this is helpful, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.